everyone. I'm so happy to be here and like thank you for having us. So me and Cheryl are going to present on how to get certified in the Power Platform. We'll start with a, a bit of an intro here. So yeah, I'm Jesse. I am an MVP and I'm passionate about everything Power Platform. And I have my own YouTube channel as well, where I post uh, a lot of content. And quite recently, over the last, um, I think I started this about May time, I decided that I was going to do a lot of certifications. Um, and I've got a whole kind of series on my YouTube channel as well about all the different certifications that exist. And that is one of the reasons that me and Cheryl are here today to share this knowledge with you. And I can also happily announce that as of Monday, because I took the last one, I, I did the PL400 on Monday. You're about to see all the different exams, but that now means I've done all the PL something exams, which is quite nice. All right. So well, uh, something I wanted to achieve before this call. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, but between myself and Cheryl, we've done them all anyway. I know Cheryl. So if anybody's wondering if you know what you're talking <laughs> about with this topic, I'd say the answer is certainly yes. <laughs> yeah. And I'll hand over to Cheryl now. Hi, uh, my name's Cheryl. I switched career track to Power Platform around three years ago. And in that time, I have passed 19 exams. Um, I became a Microsoft Certified Trainer last year, and I've recently become a Microsoft MVP. And I am living proof that it's never too late and that we rise by lifting others. So, um, Jesse and I, we're here today to talk to you about certifications, how to get certified in the Power Platform, and we're going to share our experiences in a number of areas. Firstly, I'm going to discuss why we think everyone should do certifications, and then Jesse will go on to talk about an overview on what certification entails and the, what the Power Platform certification path looks like, and then provide some guidance on how to book exams then it'll be back to me and I'll give you an outline on how to prepare for exams and hopefully give you some top tips. Finally, over to Jesse, who will share some useful resources. So I'm going to talk now about why you should do certifications. OK, you might ask yourself, what's in it for me? Right. And there are a few reasons on the screen here. The first one is maybe you want to learn a new subject or a new technology. So my reason was actually that I'd lost a couple of jobs in quick succession and I wanted to switch up my career track. So I wanted to learn something new. I'd seen the Power Platform. I thought it had loads of potential. So I embarked on, on learning all about it. OK, and since then, I've gained a whole new career. It's had a massive impact on myself and on my family. And I can I can heartily recommend it to anyone who's considering doing the same. Um, additionally, as I mentioned, you know, I was awestruck by the, the potential of the of the platform and I have a genuine interest in all of the technology, particularly around the power of tech for good. So anything, you know, anything cool that can bring social impact and make the world a better place, I'm really interested in and I'm happy to spend time learning about that. The second reason is to maybe improve on your existing subject knowledge. So you might be someone who's already working in Power Platform and you might be hoping to, you know, enhance your own career prospects. Well, a lot of partners actually link development paths to certifications. So taking exams will actually not harm your career in any way, shape or form. Additionally, you know, as professionals, we need to keep ourselves current. The technology platform is changing at a pace, right? And we need we need to update our skills with it. So by taking exams and learning for exams, that helps us to make sure that we're always armed with the most recent information about all of the products that we use, right? And the very last reason, and I think personally, this is the best reason of all, is to keep growing as a person, you know, to ensure your personal growth and development. You know, Satya Nadella himself says that we should be a learn it all and um, and foster a growth mindset. And certainly I like to think that I've become a lifelong learner. Um, I am, you know, motivated to learn new things by learning for certifications, right? And it also helps me to to gain some sort of structure around that learning. And the very last reason actually is that if 
if you do go to study groups or attend learning events, um, you might meet some great new people just like just like we have. OK, over to you, Jessie. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to run you through like all the different certifications that there are and then also talk about the path. Now, in terms of the certifications, you can see them on the screen here. And I put them in an order here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to take them in this order. And what's kind of interesting about all these certifications is they have this naming convention where the DA100 stands for the Data Analyst Associate. And in this one, it's all about preparing data, modeling data, analyzing the data and deploying and maintaining deliverables. On the next screen, once we get to that slide in a second, what we'll see is that the DA100 Data Analyst Associate is actually the name of the certification, whereas the exam has a slightly different name. So that's on the next screen. So these are the certifications. So I guess think of these as kind of like the, the badges as such that you can get. The PL900 next is the Power Platform Fundamentals. Um, so this is, I guess, your base level. And also the thing to note here with the different exams, and this numbering convention actually is also used in other areas, not just the Power Platform, where the 900 is actually, um, I don't want to say easier, but it is the more foundation level course. The PL100 is the Power uh, App Maker Associate. So this is now thinking about people that make apps, make solutions, starting that, that process of actually building applications. And as we move up, PL200 is now a functional consultant. So this is where you need to know about what functional requirements there might may be, for example, to create uh, solutions. And then as we move forward, the PL400, which is actually the one I mentioned I took on Monday, gets a little bit more technical. So you have to know about coding. There's actually Canvas app formulas in that exam. There's uh, stuff about uh, portals and, you know, when to use Liquid, etc. And then we also then have the PL600, which is the architect exam. So this is kind of your, your power platform architect exam. So if we go to the next slide, I'm now going to actually explain this thing that I was talking about with the exams and how they relate to the certifications. So you can see here that I put them on this path and this isn't necessarily the path you need to take them in. I mean, I did not take them in this path either, but it's a, a good way of actually seeing how they, they build on top of each other as well. So the DA100, you can see here that you take the exam, which is called Analyzing Data with Microsoft Power BI, and it gets you certified as a data analyst associate. Now the PL100, you take the Microsoft Power Platform App Maker and it gets you certified as a Power Platform App Maker associate. So now you see that the exam names and the certification name are a little bit more aligned as we move through. So the PL200, the 400 and the 900 have similar names to the, the actual exam. The PL600 is the only certification path where you need to take more than one exam to earn the badge. The badge being the Microsoft Certified Power Platform Solution Architect Expert. So at the bottom, what you can see there is that you have to take either the 200 or the 400, which are both now badges. So trying to explain that difference between badges and exams again. And the second exam you see there, which says Power Platform Solution Architect, that's an exam. So that's the PL600 exam. And once you take either the 200, the 400 and the 600, you get the certification, which is called the Power Platform Solution Architect Expert. So what's interesting as well when you take these exams is when you do start getting these badges that you get, there is a separate area for exams. And there is also a separate area for the certifications. So when you are approaching taking these exams, you know, hopefully this, this slide has helped to understand those differences between, between the different exams you can take. So in terms of how to book them, um, we haven't included the links here because they're quite easy to find. So for example, here I've got the PL100 screenshot here. So if you just went into Google and you just typed in PL100, Pearson View, uh, Microsoft, 
uh, exam or something, it will land you straight into the link. And all of the different uh, link pages look like this. And on here, what you can see is that you can schedule on Pearson View. So if I click that button, I'll then be prompted to pay for the exam <coughs> and take it. And what's really nice as well right now is that there is an offer going on right now for anyone impacted by COVID, which you can actually schedule the exam for $15. Now, another thing uh, worth mentioning as well, when we're thinking about paying for exams, there are um, some uh, companies some do actually help you pay for exams as well. So, you know, make sure you ask your employer if that's possible. And I know, Cheryl, you might mention this in a second, because I know we were talking about this. Sometimes there are kind of competitions and things and hackathons you can enter, which may give you some vouchers as well. So, you know, there, there is help out there to, to pay for these exams as well. Now, in terms of once we've booked them, so now we know what certifications we have, now we're going to book them. How do we actually sit the exams? So there's two different ways. You can either sit them at a, um, a centre or you can sit them at home. Now, I've done both. And I'll give you my opinion on kind of the, the pros and cons of both, um, but it's quite personal. So at a centre, what's quite nice is that, you know, you've really got your, yourself ready for the exam. You've left your house, you know, you've, you know, you've got your water if you're allowed it and you've got, you know, you've got, you've taken off all your watches and your phones and, you know, everything's gone. So that, that's quite nice because it's like a, a mindset that you put yourself in. Having said that, being at home for me is, is the same because you do have someone watching you the entire time that you're on an exam, which can be unnerving actually at first. So that's something to consider. I mean, I remember one of the first exams I did um, at home, I had my uh, hand slightly covering my mouth just because I was thinking, I had like a thinking face. And they, uh, someone came up on the screen and said, do not cover your mouth. And it was like, whoa, someone's watching me this entire time. So yeah, have a think about that. Um, and yeah, I'll pass on to Cheryl. Right, so on the screen here, we can see a number of ways that we can prepare for exams. The first one I'm going to talk about is self-study. And the benefit of self-study um, is that it's free and uh, you don't have a dedicated time commitment. And for me, as a, you know, as a working mum of four, that's ideal because I never know when I'm going to have, you know, large blocks of time available. So my go to normally when I when I begin to study for any sort of exam is to go straight to Microsoft Learn. Right. So Microsoft provide the Microsoft Learn website. It's got all of the information you need, all of the material you need to be able to pass any of the exams. And this material is, is organized for you into learning paths, OK, which make it really easy to, to follow along all of the materials that, that are needed. Um, you're allowed to create a profile and collections that enable you to organize all of the learning and you're given challenges that, that help to keep that, you know, that learning interesting. The next one down is community events, you know, and these are a fantastic resource that can augment some of the material that's available on Microsoft Learn. And some of the things that are available are things like Power Community Saturdays and boot camps. Recently, I've helped out with a with a portals and a self service boot camp, and I know there's a financial services um, event running tomorrow. Other events include things like the Scottish Summit, which um, that is next February, actually it runs yearly, and the South Coast Summit that a lot of us that were on this call actually attended just last weekend. Yay! Um, so those those events are full of learning opportunities, okay, presented by some awesome, awesome community advocates for certification. You've also got things like study groups and you can you can find yourself a study partner. So I I personally have been to study groups mainly with um, Julian Sharp, who's an MVP, and I've actually I'm not sure if it's five or six certifications that I've passed with Julian, but they're a fantastic resource because they help keep you focused. You get to share your learning journey with other people, and obviously you can then if you want to find study partners or as I call them study buddies among the other people that are taking those certifications. Uh, the next one down is, rega is regarding community material and I use a lot of community material that's largely material that I find online but also includes for example printed material so Julian Sharp who I've just mentioned actually wrote a fantastic book for the PL200 so anyone who's thinking of taking the PL200 Julian's written a study guide for that 
Obviously, you can go to YouTube where you find myself. You know, I'm a great um, a, a person who likes to use a mixture of, of learning material. So I find videos really helpful. And actually, I can recommend Jessie's channel because she's got some great videos there about certification. And I also use blogs quite a lot. Um, my go to actually for a lot of the stuff that I do, I use Neil Parker's blog quite a lot. And uh, I've also got a blog. So if anyone's interested in learning a bit more about certifications, I blog about all of the resources that I've used to pass all of the exams I've taken. OK, another one there is the Microsoft Virtual Training On Demand. So um, if you go to events.microsoft.com, you'll find a whole bunch of recorded training events that are, that are there for you to consume as and when you like. The next option is formal training and formal training is great for anyone who who has you know, has an amount of time that they can give up and amount of money because it is quite expensive. Formal training is given by learning partners and they deliver what's called Microsoft Official Courseware. And that courseware will, is, it contains everything you need to know about the particular technology and will help you pass a particular certification. But, you know, as I say, that depends on having the time and the money. The next one on a formal training site is Microsoft Virtual Training Live. So, in, on the same site where you can find the on demand, you can also register for live events. And that's great because it's really interactive and you get the opportunity to sort of ask questions. So if there's anything you're not quite sure of, uh, you can you can ask questions of the moderators and they'll pass them on to the person who's given the training. The last one is Microsoft Live Events. I think we were talking earlier about the fact that, yes, we don't have live events at the moment, but we are hoping to have them again at some point in the near future. And Microsoft do quite often run live training events in their local offices, and, and hopefully we'll see that open it up again at some point soon. The last section on here is regarding um, exam prep, and this is so important. I cannot stress it enough, particularly if it's the first exam that you've ever taken. So you'll need to find out, you know, how the exam works and what the questions might look like. And you can actually use Microsoft Docs for that. There are some great sections on there that guide you through the different question types. And it's really good if you can familiarize yourself with those before you go into an exam so that you don't have any nasty surprises. Additionally, another great resource is Measure Up, which is a company who are accredited by Microsoft to provide practice exams. So I'm just going to go through a quick uh, quick overview of some top tips that, that myself and Jesse have come up with based on our experience of taking exams. Um, the first one, and this is the best advice that I've ever been given, is book the exam, right? Uh, Stephen Covey says in his book, which is one of my favourite books, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, start with the end in mind right it really helps you to once you book that exam it helps you to understand what you need to do to actually be successful with that exam booking it gives you a deadline and it prevents helps to prevent procrastination i'm a great procrastinator i don't know if any of you've seen the amazing ted talk by a guy called tim urban right he talks about the panic monster right and i am I am the sort of person who will leave things until the last minute and the panic monster comes and gives me a nasty surprise the day before something is due. Don't be like me, right? <laughs> don't, don't get into those bad habits. You know, get that exam booked and, and plan your time. Make sure that you check the exam skills outline. Now, this is vital. It'll tell you exactly what you need to learn and it'll give you a checklist to work to. Work to. And you can find that on Microsoft Learn. The next one I've got is to go at your own pace. When you do use Microsoft Learn, they'll give you timings that they suggest for the amount of time it should take you to learn any particular subject. I find, depending on how well I know the material, these times can vary significantly to the suggestions that are given on Learn. And the main thing to bear in mind is it is not a race, right? Everybody, everybody learns at different speeds. To help you in terms of not procrastinating like me and to get all the learning done on time and, and be able to pass your exam, set up a learning calendar, right? Base it on the skills outline. It'll help you stay on track and it'll tell you if you're not on track so that you can push the exam out if you need to. Exams can be rescheduled, right? 
and it will help you not to skip over any areas of learning and as I've said minimize procrastination. I would advise to use a variety of, of learning materials and Microsoft Learn is my favorite but you know as I've mentioned there are lots of things available from the community. Also you could create things like mind maps or flashcards to help things stick in your mind. I've particularly done that when I've had a lot of terminology to learn. So for example, I did the AZ900 and there were a lot of unfamiliar terms in that one for me. So flashcards came in really helpful. Um, a guy called Carl Cookson, who is the author of the Linked 365 blog, has some great information on that if you want to go and take a look. Practice, practice, practice. I've seen in the chat that somebody has remarked on getting a dev tenant, right? I, I never do anything unless I've worked through it right several times I always take it a trial and these are available the best one that I find is actually on the Microsoft developer website then we come on to rubber ducks now I don't have my rubber duck handy I meant to get one ready for the call um, but I, I'm a big fan of Sesame Street where well, I was as a child anyway and I would never be without my rubber ducky and I've got one just over here um, Joking aside, there is something that we can learn from our pro dev friends, right? And they use a technique. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So pro devs use a technique called rubber ducking, which is to when they're trying to debug or to try to understand complex code, they explain each line of the code to some random inanimate object, for example, a rubber duck. Okay. And this actually, you know, as I said, joking aside, this is actually based on something called the protege effect, uh, which basically means that when you teach something or explain something to someone else, it actually helps you to learn it better. Uh, the very last thing that I want to, to um, point out is that we all have to learn to fail. You know, I'm saying learn to fail gracefully because that was like an old Unix thing that we used to do but yeah so learn to fail don't become disheartened when you fail right we all fail sometimes and it is not the end we can always try again I mentioned something earlier called the growth mindset and, and this notion came about from from a book by a, a lady called Carol Dweck right she's a, a she, I think she's like a, a psychologist right and something else that Carol talks about in her book about growth mindsets is the power of yet right and I really believe in the power of yet if you don't pass an exam it doesn't mean that you're a failure it simply means that you haven't passed the exam yet okay and the great thing and it is a great thing about about failing an exam is that you get an indication of all of the areas that you need to improve upon which increases your chance of passing it the next time round. So here are some resources. When we, when myself and Cheryl had a chat about this, we, we didn't want to overload this slide. So there's a couple of links going in the chat as well. Um, so we've only got really four on here. So we've got Cheryl's blog, we've got the Measure Up. And like I said in the chat, we're not endorsed by Measure Up. Measure Up isn't paying <laughs> us, we both really like it. Uh, we've got my uh, channel there as well at Microsoft Learn and I saw a few comments in the chat about someone who commented on like Microsoft Learn so Microsoft Learn is a great way to I think get started with the tooling but it's it's not the only way that you can pass the exams I would say so lots of practice so actual practice and looking at exam questions as well will really help and there's like one last comment that I want to uh, actually talk about someone just mentioned this like when do these exams you can you can mark uh, questions for review and you can basically come back to them. And like one method I always use is I, I kind of just go through the whole exam in 20 minutes, the first round time round and anything I'm a hundred percent sure on, they just go into my, I'm not looking at that question again, Q. Yeah. And, same. Yeah. Yeah. And any that I'm even got like a little bit of doubt, I just keep in my uh, review queue and my review queue just gets smaller and smaller and smaller until I'm like, OK, I'm done now. And I just submit. So works for me. And yeah, Sarah, Cheryl, you mentioned you do it as well. So it could yeah. work for others yeah. on the call as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it from us. A couple questions to follow up. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, so typically, how long does it take you to study for one of these exams? I know we're all different, but if you set your exam date out six weeks, is that too aggressive or what would you recommend? From my perspective, it depends on what sort of the level of the exam. So if you start with a, found, so for instance, a foundation type exam, 
um, like PL900 for the Power Platform. Mm -hmm. Those are, because those require a high level understanding rather than in-depth knowledge of each of the products, mm -hmm. they'll, I, I think, you know, I generally find those a bit quicker to learn for. So yeah, I wouldn't, you know, I would expect say six weeks to be quite reasonable for something like a, a foundations exam, but certainly for the, for the associate exams, that's going. It's going to take you a little bit longer to do the associate exams because mm -hmm. they expect you to understand how to do things in the Power Platform, you know. And then, you know, it, it's more difficult again then potentially for for the for the architect exams. Jesse, I don't know um, if you'd agree with that. Yeah, I agree. And it also depends on how much experience you already have. Because when I first started doing these exams in like May, I already had a little bit of experience. So doing the, I say a little bit, a couple of years of experience at least. So doing the PL 900, the 100, I didn't really have to do too much. Um, but that's just because I was I was validating my skills for those ones. Whereas for the 400, actually the one I took on Monday, I did feel like I had to do a little bit more kind of revision and learning. The other thing I wanted to mention is a bit off topic, but you know these are the power platform exams. Sarah, you already mentioned the AZ900, which is another one I've done. There's things outside the platform that we should also look to be learning, depending on our careers. That makes sense. And now, when you go take the exam, I'm sure people who haven't taken it are curious about that too. How long does it take? You mentioned you like to run through it in 20 minutes and knock out all the ones you're for sure on. I'm guessing it's about an hour. For most people, is that how your experience was too? Again, different exams, different level exams have different allocated time. Mm -hmm. So the the fundamentals exams are a lot shorter than the than the sort of the functional associate exams. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you them. know, a cool note. Something I don't know if anyone spotted this in chat. I did. The young man watching our call here, Golshan, I, I hope I got your name right. He mentioned that he's seven years old and he passed PL 900. So, oh, he's seven years old. For Anav. Yeah, it's Pranav. He's on his dad's, he's on his dad's account. <laughs> That's awesome. How long did it take you to study for that? Uh, if I'm correct, I started back in January starting preparing for this. Right. Sometime in the this year, That's and really I did cool. it around the beginning of August, so end of July, then cleared it. So about eight months, I would say, seven and a half, seven. That's really around. cool. Well done, young man. I'll tell you what, when you're 16, shoot me an email because I got a job for you. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so inspiring. Seven years old, you passed that exam. Way to go, man. Keep up the good work. I'm sure you're rocking in school, too. Actually, he came well, that... to the South Coast Summit at the weekend. It was lovely, lovely to meet you, actually. And he's, he just loves oh, it, yeah. right? It's, he's genuinely, don't you, enthusiastic yeah. about it. Very cool. Very neat. I'm glad you all met, met before, too. That's really neat. Well, maybe we'll run into him at Ignite someday and he'll be presenting and we'll be watching. That would be pretty cool. Huh? Very neat. Well, thank you both for, for the awesome brain dump on how to go get certified and everything about it there is very helpful. I know that that can be an intimidating topic when you go just try to go to a search engine and go, how do I go about this? So thank you so much for laying it out there. That's could great. I just good say, luck on all um, your certs too? Yeah, Cheryl. Could I quickly say if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone's got. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Well, next time y'all have something cool to share again, let me know. We'd love to have you back.